What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scuba Marina. Today I've got the Mares XR soft plate here and I want to make a quick video showing you how to start the threading process with your harness and then at the end of the video I'm going to show you how to actually adjust it to make sure it fits you properly. So let's get started. Alright guys, so before we get started, let's take a quick look at everything you're going to need. Of course, you're going to need your back plate of choice. You're going to need several different just plain tri-glides. You're going to need two tri-glides. It's got these teeth on it. You're going to need your harness of choice. Of course, you're going to need your D-rings. I have two flat D-rings and I also have two pre-bent pre D-rings. I've got a little bungee loop here. I'll talk about that briefly. I've got just one flat book screw. I've got several different retainers and I've also got a buckle. Now, what I did is I just got the Mares XR Heavy Light Harness to go with the Mares XR Soft Plate. And of course, it does come with a crotch strap. I've already pre-attached my crotch strap. That's pretty self-explanatory. You're just going to double thread it through the tri-glide that's pre-attached. You're going to put your D-ring on and re-secure it with that tri-glide as well. Um, as far as adjustment goes on this, what you want to do is from the bottom of the harness to the top of the D-ring, you're going to want about a hand's width there. And then kind of the same uh, principle up top, when, you, when you've got your waist strap going through here, you're going to want about a hand's width for that D-ring that's pre-attached. That's, once again, it's just kind of um, self-explanatory on, on that one, so I'm going to have it pre-attached. But getting started with a, a typical backplate wing and, and starting the harness is, is a pretty simple procedure. But when it comes to a soft plate where we've already got these pre-mounted tri-glides, it can be a little bit difficult. Now, a couple other things to note is, is with the Mares XR harness, it is a branded harness. So if you're wanting the logos to show, you're gonna have to do it in one, in one particular way. If you've got just a standard harness, then it doesn't really matter. But all I wanna do is just open up the harness until I find the little grommet here. Now, on this particular one, the way I do it, I wanna start with the logo facing outward, and it also needs to kinda of start in the upside down position. And all I want to do is line it up with the second grommet from the top, just like that. I'm going to take my little flat book screw here, and I'm just going to secure that harness in place through that second grommet, just like this. Okay? Now, for video purposes, I'm just doing this hand tight. You would want to secure it with uh, two flathead screwdrivers just to make sure it's good and secure on there. But this is the position you want to start in, and it's very important to go ahead and secure your harness to begin with. That way it's not flapping around. It's already going to be secure. Now, to get started and to get this up through here, if you was to just thread that through, you're going to have all this bulk here. It's going to be very uncomfortable on your back. So what I like to do is kind of fold the harness over into kind of like a half trapezoid type position here, just like that right there. I'm gonna go ahead and fold it over, press it down, create a crease in it, and over time as this gets wet, that crease is gonna help flatten that harness down, and I promise you guys, you'll never feel it on your back. So once I've got that crease started, and that crease should kind of line straight up with the tri-glide here, that's an easy way to know that you've kind of got it in the right position. All you're going to do is find the end of your harness strap itself and through this pre-attached tri-glide you're going to start through the bottom slot and just simply thread it up through and you'll see here in a minute why we wanted to start with the harness showing the branding. All right. So as I thread that through I want to make sure that I stay lined up with my initial crease. Okay. So just like that there. And then I'm going to thread back through to kind of start the shoulder strap. I'll thread back through the top of that tri-glide. Now, since I started with the branding showing, as I threaded it up through, now my shoulder strap will show that branding. Now, if you're not too keen on that, you can simply use a harness that doesn't have the branding, or you can simply flip the harness over and do it in the other position, and of course it won't show. Now, that I've got a shoulder strap here, I need to start putting the accessories on it, the D-rings, everything like that. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna get one of these standard flat tri-glides. I'm gonna thread up through the bottom. Kinda get it where I think it needs to be. Now mine has already been threaded, so I've already got uh, little indents in the webbing here to make it a little bit easier. But I'm just gonna thread through the bottom first. And there's a couple of different things I'm gonna thread on. The first thing's gonna be this little bungee strap, which ends up being my retainer for my inflator hose. 
all right and i'm also going to take one of the pre-bent d-rings and i'm going to go ahead and thread it on as well and once i've got them in position to secure them in place all you have to do is take your webbing thread it through the bottom of the triglide just like this and that's going to lock in place both that d-ring and that little bungee and like i said that bungee is to secure my inflator hose when i'm wearing it the next thing i want to do is add a retainer now these retainers tend to fray a little bit so to keep that from happening all you got to do is simply turn it inside out just like that so when you thread it onto your harness you're going to have a smooth side on both the left and right so i'm going to thread it on this retainer is going to be used for spare flashlights or any hoses that you want to keep retained down Okay, just like that right there. Now I'm gonna move on down and I'm gonna start the waist strap part. Now to do this, once again, I want that logo to show outward to begin with and it's gonna kinda be in that upside down position, if you will. I'm gonna start with the inside slot of the triglide and I'm just gonna simply thread through it. And once you have your entire back plate and wing uh, assembled, you can worry about adjusting it Typically speaking, about a foot from the back plate up is about what I'll look for to start with. All right, so once I've got that in position, I'm gonna go ahead and go through the front of the triglide as well. And that should lock your shoulder strap in. And it's also going to begin your waist strap. So here it is on the right hand side. You can see I've got my D-rings in place. I've got my little retainer. I've got my retainer for my inflator hose. And then I've also, pre-started the waist strap as well. All right guys, so now that I've got the waist strap started, there's two more things I need to add to the left-hand side here before I can put my buckle on and finish with the left side. I wanna go ahead and grab one of the uh, triglides that's got the teeth on it, and I wanna simply just thread up through the bottom of it, and I'm gonna kinda of just guesstimate where I need to put it here. Um, you can always readjust it once you're wearing it, but you're gonna grab one of your flat D-rings, and you're gonna go ahead and thread it on as well. And to secure it, you just simply go through the front side of that triglide, and that's going to lock that D-ring into place, just like that. Now, one of the things that I do, you don't necessarily have to do, is I add one extra triglide. And I'm going to show you here in a minute why I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and thread it on. And basically, it's just going to come out just a few inches in front of the previous one. Um, it doesn't really matter where you put it, and I, I should make note, this is not necessarily a step that you're going to do. This is something I do. Uh, one of the reasons I put that there, this is designed to hold any excess webbing in place, just like that. So I, I would simply just thread it back through, and it's going to hold it in place. Now, the reason I do that is because I personally don't cut my harnesses because I may sell them at any time. And if I want to be able to sell them and it fit the person I'm selling it to, then I don't want to cut any excess harness off. But for you guys, by all means, once you get everything threaded, you're going to simply just cut your harness, burn the end so it doesn't fray, and that way it fits you. For me, I, I want to keep as much harness as I can because being in the industry, I may end up selling this harness. Now, the next thing I want to do is add a retainer here, just like I did at the top part. I'm just going to simply turn it inside out, just like that and I'm going to thread it up onto the webbing, very simply, and I'll show you here in a minute what this is for as well, alright, so now I'm going to go to my buckle, now the buckle can be a little bit tricky because there's several different slots here, and there's actually several ways that you can do this, I like to start very simply up through the bottom, okay, like that, okay, real simple, and then I'm going to thread down through the second slot, like this. That kind of locks that buckle into position, but now I need to get rid of the excess, so I'm gonna come back up through the final slot, just like this, and then I will take the excess and thread it back through the first slot. Just like that. And that's actually going to lock that buckle into position. Now, what I do with the retainer, not only is it going to hold this extra lint down, like I said, you would probably want to cut yours, but not only is it going to hold this down, it's also going to hold down the waist strap itself once I'm wearing the system. Okay? 
So I'm gonna pull it forward all the way. And then as you can tell here, I've got just enough left to go back up through this triglide. Just like that. And then back down through the other side. And that what that's gonna do is actually hold in place any of the extra webbing that I don't wanna cut off. Now for you guys, once again, you're gonna probably cut yours off once you've got it adjusted. But what that does is lock that into place. I don't have any entanglement. And then if I ever decide to sell this harness, I can very easily extend it back out to fit whoever I sell it to. So guys, that's the left side. I'm gonna do a little bit of movie magic here. I'm gonna repeat the process on the right side. And then once I've got it together, I'll put it on and show you how to adjust it. So a little bit of movie magic. All right, guys. So now that I've got the left side over here done as well, all that's left is actually putting it on, adjusting it, getting the D-rings in the right place, and then we'll be good to go. So let's walk over here. I'll throw this guy on for you, and I'll show you how to adjust it. All right, guys. As you can see, I've got the back plate and wing on. Here's the front, of course, and then if you want to see the back, there you go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make sure that we have it adjusted properly for us. We make sure that we can very easily get in and out of it when we're doning and doffing it. We want to make sure that we got the D-rings in the right place and we want to make sure that the back plate itself is at the right height. So starting back here with the back plate, what you want to do is take the palm of your hand. You want to reach your hand straight up, reach straight down just like this, and you should find the top of the back plate with your fingertips. As long as you can touch the top, then you've got your plate at the right height. Now this is very important for that incidence where you're gonna have to reach back and manipulate the valve for whatever reason, whether you're in a single tank or a double tank scenario. Now looking at the shoulder straps to make sure that they're not too tight, you want about a fifth width of play, so about that much of play there, so that you can barely easily get the shoulder strap on and off if you're doning and doffing it. Stand up here on the shoulder straps. Let's look at the D-rings real quick. You don't want them too low that they're down here in your armpits hurting anytime you move your arms, but you don't want them way up on your shoulders neither to where you can't find the D-ring. So one thing that I like to do is take my arms straight out with my thumbs extended. I should be able to bring them in and without even looking, I should be able to find the D-rings. Once again, maybe you're clipping off a spare flashlight or a regulator or something like that. You need to be able to find it without looking at it. Just a smooth motion, just like this. Moving down to the waist strap, you don't want your waist strap way up here near your belly button. You want it to kind of create a V towards your crotch. So as the shoulder straps come down, it's gonna create that V down into the crotch strap. And of course your crotch strap, you don't want it too awfully tight neither, just simply because of comfort of course. But you want the D-ring approximately a hand width away and the D-ring back here needs to be about a hand width away too from the bottom of the plate. Moving over to the side D-rings. Now an easy way to make sure they're adjusted properly is the seam of your shirt. If you run your hand down the seam of your shirt, you should be able to find these D-rings. Once again, without even looking, I can clip off if I need to, or on the other side, if I'm clipping off to a stage or say my uh, pressure gauge or something like that, I don't even have to look down. I can just find it and clip off to it. So guys, that's how you properly adjust this thing. If you got any questions on the soft plate or any of the back plate and wing harnesses from the Mares XR line, just give me a comment down below or ask me a question. I'll be happy to answer your questions the best I can. I really appreciate you watching this video. If, it, if you found it helpful for you, simply hit that like button for me. Guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.